Good evening, everyone. I'd like to reconvene the open meeting. Um, I have 702. And if we could stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if we could remain standing for a moment of silence for the work before us this evening. And Mr. Levis, if you could uh, notify the public about the emergency exits, please. Sure. In case of emergency, there's uh, exits uh, at the rear of the room to your left and right. Uh, if you go out into the foyer, you can exit to the left or the right out to the front of the building and to the parking lot. Thank you. And Member Dixon, if you could do the honor of reading the mission statement for Coventry Public Schools. The Coventry Public Schools with community partnerships educate, inspire, and motivate students to be lifelong learners. Thank you. Um, just to inform the public, the school committee met at 6 o'clock in executive session, at which time we discussed matters related to homeschooling, approval of our minutes from executive session, and pending litigation, and the superintendent's evaluation. There were two votes taken, one for the homeschooling um, request and one for the executive session minute approval, and both carried four to zero. It was unanimous. One of our members was late to the meeting. That being said, is there a motion to seal the minutes of the executive session? Madam Chair, I make a motion to seal the records, that the records of the executive session be kept pursuant, be kept closed, pursuant to sections 42-46-4 and 42-46-5. I second the motion. Any questions from the committee? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries 5-0. to zero. Moving on to the approval of our open meeting minutes from 11 8 18. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve the minutes of the open meeting of November 8, 2018, as presented slash amended. I second the motion. Any questions or concerns from the committee? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries 5 to 0. Moving on to agenda item number 6, personnel. I reference number 2. Is there a motion to approve the Classified administra Administrator <laughs> Resignation, sorry. Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve the resignation of Jennifer Carlos as an employee of the Coventry Public Schools effective October 31st, 2018. I second the motion. Any questions from the committee? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries 5 to 0. Moving on to certified resignations. Um, did you want to speak to Sure. This? I just want to thank uh, Mr. Dufault. He's a uh, Retiring uh, from carpentry at uh, Coventry High School, uh, he's a phenomenal teacher and uh, just he's going to definitely be missed. Yes, I agree. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve the resignation of Jean Dufault, carpentry teacher at Coventry High School, effective June 30th, 2019, for the purpose of retirement. I second the motion. Any questions from the committee? All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries 5 to 0. Moving on to classified resignations. Did you want to speak to that? No, I stated. Is there a motion? <coughs> Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve the resignation of Joanne White. 6.5 hour day teacher assistant intensive support score at Hopkins Hill Elementary School effective November 20, 2018. I second the motion. <coughs> any questions from the committee? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries 5 to 0. Moving on to certified leaves of absence. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve a leave of without pay for Sarah Thomas, math teacher at Allen Sean Feinstein Middle School from approximately January 8, 2019 through February 16, 2019. I second the motion. Any questions from the committee? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries 5 to 0. Moving on to Amy Garland. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve the leave of absence for Amy Garland, SCORE teacher at Hopkins Hill Elementary School, 
from approximately February 10, 2019 through March 29, 2019. I second the motion. Any questions on the committee? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries 5 to 0. Moving on to Rebecca Russell. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve the leave of absence for Rebecca Russell, intensive support teacher, ALC, at Allen Shaw and Feinstein Middle School from approximately April 26, 2019 through June 7, 2019. Second the motion. Any questions from the committee? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries 5 to 0. Moving on to certified appointments. Did you want to speak to any of those? Mr. No, Mayor? just as stated. Okay. <coughs> Fair motion. Madam Chair, I make a motion to affirm the recommendation of the superintendent to appoint Wendy Arnold, Arnold one year only, point four, inclusion teacher at Tioga Elementary School, retroactive to November 19, 2018. I second the motion. Any questions from the committee? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries 5 to 0. Moving on to Matt Jester. Madam Chair, I make a motion to affirm the recommendation of the superintendent to appoint Matt Jester, point four hour day, supervisory yard aid at Hopkins Hill Elementary School, effective November 26, 2018. This position was open after the October 2018 job fair. I second the motion. Any questions from the committee? I, I have a question. Yep. Is it, is it a point four or a four hour? A oh, four hour. Four hour. Four hour. Four hour. Okay. Excuse four hour. me. I just want to make sure we got that right. Yes. Yes. Four hour. Yeah. That would have been tough. Yeah, that would have been, yeah. <laughs> good eye, good eye. Um, Thank all you, in James. favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? The ayes have a motion carries five to zero. Moving on to coaching appointments. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I make a motion to affirm the recommendation of the superintendent to appoint Ray Lamont, assistant hockey coach at Coventry High School, effective November twentieth, two thousand eighteen. I second the motion. Any questions from the committee? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries 5 to 0. Moving on to um, Nathan Brown. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I make a motion to affirm the recommendation of the superintendent to appoint Nathan Brown, assistant wrestling coach at Coventry High School, effective November 20, 2018. I second the motion. Any questions from the committee? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries 5 to 0. Moving on to grant funded appoint, a grant funded appointment. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I make a motion to affirm the recommendation of the superintendent to appoint Kimberly Levi, five hour slash week ELL assistant grant funded position for the district, Hop, Hopkins Hill Elementary School slash Washington Oak Elementary School, effective November 20th, 2018, start date retro to November 13, 2018. I second the motion. Any questions from the committee? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Any opposed? The motion carries 5 to 0. Moving on to the public agenda. Um, the following agenda items are open to public discussion. If there is a vote or a motion that we make, you can speak to the motion before we actually call for the vote. That being said, I guess we can have number 7, which is the celebration. Mr. Levitt? Yes. So, um, we... This has been our highly anticipated uh, celebration with uh, Max <laughs> Riley. Um, I'll let uh, Mr. Smith from our high school, who's uh, been an instructor, uh, mentor. coach, mentor for Max for, for many, many years. And uh, actually, Max, you make him look very good. Okay. <laughs> So the 
Your National Honor Performance Performance is representing the collaboration of great figures in the entire country. Your National Honor Performance is a jazz ensemble, mixed choir, guitar ensemble, which includes a shiro, and symphony orchestra concertina. Students were chosen through an audition process and are very rigorous about it. The jazz ensemble has 20 instrumentalists, the mixed choir 250, the guitar ensemble 47, the symphony orchestra 120 students, and the concert band of 121. Eligible students have qualified for the state level honor ensemble program. Now, this wasn't really applicable to guitar, but the guitar ensemble actually has been an exception now for six years, six years at the state level with the Master Plan Volunteer Center and competed against top students for the Boston National Honor Ensemble. So if we move on to what Max will be doing next week, Max is going down to Virginia and performing in these groups and with this guitar ensemble with a guy by the name of Dr. Michael Quam, who is very, very well renowned throughout the guitar world. And he'll be conducting that in a concert. Three days, and if I'm missing anything, Karen, let me know. Uh, three days down in the Disney World, performing the rehearsal and, and finally I think the concert is the 28th at 10 o'clock in the morning before you arrive home. So this letter I'm about to uh, read is actually from Tony Annette Silvera. I mean, she's the renowned Miss Baker Post of the Treasure. This came as of September 17th this year. I would like to congratulate you on your selection for the All National Honors Ensemble. It was exciting to see where I'm represented and how timely it brought to you. Your hard work and talent have earned you a seat in one of the top ensembles in the country. I have no doubt you will have an amazing experience at the National Festival. The Brown Education Association wants to help support our students such as yourself and close a $200 check for Max and anything he really wants to do with it. Mm -hmm. And congratulations again on being selected. And this is actually from the United States Senate in Japanese Chinese. Mm -hmm. So I just really wanted to Very personally nice. congratulate Max. He's been an inspiration. He plays guitar in the guitar uh, in the jazz ensemble. And this year he actually auditioned for jazz ensemble at the state level. And before he even talks about it, I've got a little surprise for him. I actually <coughs> just found out the result of all of this. He became first in the state, not only for classical, but for jazz. No kidding. <laughs> Woo! Can you, want to tell us, can you tell us about the process, like what you had to do just to get become accepted with the national? Oh. All right. So first of all, you had to make all state, which in itself was a task. And you're competing with kids from performing arts college, from Providence, Pawtucket, Barrington, all these top level school communities, and uh, and you have to come out in a pretty notable sense to even be recognized by them. And uh, so I did. They sent me a letter saying, "Okay, we'll do these uh, three exercises. They're uh, they're mildly difficult, but uh, hey, you should be able to do them, right? Uh, just send us a video, <laughs> and we'll be judging you against hundreds of other kids across the country. No big deal." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they're not mildly complicated. They're actually pretty complicated. <laughs> and. Uh, it took me uh, like a month and a half to practice continuously to really get down into a presentable fashion before I was able to actually uh, record that and send it to them. And uh, after that came, if I recall, a month. Yeah, a month of waiting. So I was waiting on that. And then uh, I find out that I'm an alternate. And that really, uh, that in itself is an accomplishment because, uh, that means I'm at least the top. 75 at least to even be considered an alternate for these people. And then uh, about two weeks later, I get the call where I've moved up to the first chair of uh, the second part of the concert. Wow. Yeah. How exciting. It's a big jump. Yeah. 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 That's exciting. But, uh, 
guess. Close Club Nationals, the best process. Anything else? <laughs> Are you nervous? Uh, am I nervous? Oh, yeah, it's really nerve wracking. <laughs> Max, we're really proud of you. You know, you, you, you made us look good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how long is the process? Um, how long are you at nationals? Um, I'm there for around uh, three days, actually, maybe four. I plane lands in Florida at midnight on uh, Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, we leave at six in the morning on Sunday. We land at nine. He's got to be in rehearsal by three. Mm, wow. And then they rehearse for three days. For three days. How's the weather down there, Kathy? Uh, uh, I was in the Kelly. Uh, Kelly. Near 80 and low between 62 and 66. It's beautiful. Sunny, that shouldn't be too bad to take. Nice. <laughs> and so I assume there will be a recording of the yeah. performance. Uh, sure, yeah. yeah, so we would love to maybe hear that too. Yeah. So. so how many um, people are in the orchestra in the Nationals? Huh, huh? Uh, the, uh, how many the students, I should say, I guess? I know for sure there are around 48 actually wow. people in the uh, guitar ensemble. Wow. Mm. Exciting. Tell us how you got interested in music. Uh, all right. So uh, <laughs> I was around uh, seven years old. I was playing a uh, rock band on my Xbox. It was, uh, for those who don't know, it's basically like it's a game where you have this. Uh, you have, like, believe. A big oh, my you have, like, a big plastic guitar with five buttons on it. And uh, the song is. I had a couple of songs that really got my attention from it. You had uh, Say It Ain't So by Weezer and Wild and Cool by Steely Dan. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that got me the most. <laughs> and I heard those songs and I said, I would really like to do that for real. So I got signed up for guitar lessons and I, uh, and I got uh, started around, uh, I want to say it was late September 2008. Seven years old, hated it for three years. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, why didn't you quit? I didn't quit. I didn't quit, and that was because uh, of my mom and dad here. They pushed me the whole way through <laughs> three years of uh, of unhappy half hour practice. <laughs> <laughs> was, uh, all right. So, the, but what really got me back in, what really got me enthusiastic about it, is this uh, performance camp up at uh, Guitar Studio in uh, West Greenwich on the Eighth and Sixth Plaza. And uh, they had a camp there where I would perform in front of people at the uh, country club. I forgot what it was called. Uh, no, Wooded Space is there. And uh, like after that, I was just hooked. I loved performing in front of people, and uh, well, I haven't stopped. That was uh, seven years ago. Wow. Dan, uh, Max, mm -hmm. do you have your own band? I do. Uh, it's mainly uh, like 70s. Uh, actually, I have a couple. I have a, like one that covers a lot of uh, hard rock songs and uh, even some alternate rock stuff, mainly like Led Zeppelin, Rush, uh, Pink Floyd. Nice. Uh, I'm on the uh, band Coachella. But uh, I have another band uh, playing with the uh, Rhode Island Philharmonic uh, Jazz Fusion Ensemble, probably the most talented group in the entire place. And uh, we play a lot of Jazz Fusion stuff. You play in Mr. Smith's band? I do. Brass attack? Uh, yeah, we actually do four fat bellies before we brass attack with 20 mistakes. And, uh, we, were, we happened to be doing this gig at this thing called Keg. And I was said to Max, I said, listen, why don't you learn my guitar solo and then bring the guitar staff that we can fit in. And that, that's actually a good comment. And, uh, can I yeah. show that on video? Sure. Notes for notes, by the way. Wow. Where can you get that off? Wow. Cool. So we did this game. So we're, we're, we're Max is Go for it. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you, Mac. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. That was that was amazing. I brought tears. I'm crying here. So, yeah, it was beautiful. Just absolutely lovely. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. Max, good luck at Berkeley. Mm. <laughs> we'll be following your career. Hmm? Yeah, we will. <sighs> Glad to see you brought your roadie with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dad. Dad's your roadie, huh? Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are we done? No. <laughs> no, I mean like done. No. <laughs> oh gosh. All right. <clears throat> Love those celebrations. That was very moving. Um, yes. Thank you for bringing him before us. So moving on to number eight, the field trip approval, which was our reference number three. Yeah, um, is Mrs. Sakosha here? Yes. Yeah, I think she's where. Yeah. Um, Mr. Levis, did you want to speak to it? Sure. Just that um, this is a pre uh, preliminary approval. The trips for next year, correct? Right. So, but um, just you know, just to give you a little background, Maria uh, is very much on top of what needs to be done. Um, she's followed the policy to this point where. Um, where it stands uh, that she's also had conversations through me with Mr. Anderson. Uh, she put together a PowerPoint, but what I Sorry. felt was the committee can look at it, but I wanted her to hear if you have any specific questions. Um, and as it goes on further, uh, probably in the spring, we can have her come back when we know more specifics, numbers, things like that. But this was to get the planning process going. So I, you know, I think she's done a phenomenal job. I think we've worked hard, you know, as the, the committee in terms of putting this policy in place for a lot of assurances. Um, so I don't know if you have questions based on the information for Maria. Yeah, I do have a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to check, is the price 3580, uh, 35.54 per student? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but there's added. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, sure, that would, you, be great. that would be great, yeah. Tell us about the cost, because it's a little bit higher than some of the other trips have been. And I'm also concerned going to three about countries, so. how the students are raising this money, if there's going to be, are there going to be fundraisers, or tell me more about that. So, well, what, what, what I like about it, no, no, no. Let her answer that first yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, Traditionally, they've been around 3000 and then on top of that, Traveling, yeah. With this company, uh, one of the things I liked about them, first of all, the kids can be put on a payment plan. Mm -hmm. I saw that, yeah. And then there's a monthly payment plan. Mm -hmm. In addition, um, if their parents' income is under, is 85000 or under, they can apply for financial aid, which gets done right through that company as well, uh, up to $600. And I'm planning it so far in advance because I want them to have the opportunity to save money. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also do, we definitely do fundraisers as well. Done fundraisers in the past, it's worked out really well. But I think just given the kids, everybody's like, sure it's 2020 and not 2019. Yes, I give them a year and a half to save the money. Yeah. And a lot of them get jobs. Yeah. We've had kids in the past who have paid for themselves. I mean, they've worked. If it were me and I was 16 at that time, my parents would have worked. I would have had that. I talked to my mom about this earlier. I said, you know, would you have been able to pay for this? And she said, no, you would have. I was working when I was 13, cleaning mm -hmm. houses, babysitting. Right. And, you know, that the kids know. They've known this since last year. I've talked about it um, because I've traveled now three times. So I'm pretty familiar with the process. And like I said, a lot of the kids, they work. So. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thank you for answering the question. Oh, you're welcome. Any other questions? Dave? Comments? Yeah. That, this, sure. uh, this sounds like a terrific once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for these kids. And, and what I really like is the fact that, like you were saying, it could be broken down. $199 a month is, is not a lot of money. 
for a young person to to save, particularly if they're working at at a local uh, local business like a Dunkin' Donuts or or McDonald's or something like that. It's it's totally it's it's totally affordable, yeah. and it's. it's This this is this is amazing. I mean, I was looking at it's like ten days, twelve days, yeah, 10 days. and uh, go with the chaperone, Dave. Huh? Go with the chaperone. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. It would raise be, the price. Yeah, I, don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that'd be a conflict or not. I'd, I'd like to go. Well, I'd have to bring Maggie too, but uh, no, that would be. Uh, it it sounds like a great deal, but you know I. We would chaperone, but I I don't think I can do that. I think it'd be a conflict of yeah, it's, it's a it's a conflict of interest as a school committee member. No, it's it's amazing. Thank you. I don't have any questions. I I liked I saw that scholarship piece, and so there's some you know there. It's nice that our company would be offering that and thinking about it. And the payment plan makes sense, so people don't have to come up with it all of a sudden. So it kind of seems like it works for me. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the committee or comments? I wish I could go, but it sounds like a great trip. <laughs> Three countries. That that's what really you know was like. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Plan so, a great trip. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like it's really going to be fun and educational. Um, are we ready to motion on this? Mr. Ma Florio. Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve a field trip for the world language students juniors and seniors to travel to Spain, Italy, and France from April 17, 2020 to April 26, 2020. I second the motion. Any further discussion from the committee? Anything from the public? Any questions, concerns? How many, I did want to ask, how many kids do you expect to go? Oh, I have to Opening? Have oh, you do, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So six students, one chaperone. Got it. Wow. Okay. Oh, All right. Yeah. Wow. That's Great. really cool. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries five to zero. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Thanks. All right. Moving on to number nine, the um, discussion and approval of the superintendent's evaluation. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve the superintendent's evaluation. I second the motion. Any further questions from the committee? Any questions from the public? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries five to zero. Moving on to number 10, the discussion and approval, approval renewal of the superintendent's contract. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I make a motion to renew the contract for Craig Levis, superintendent of the Coventry Public Schools through school, school year ending June. 2022. I second the motion. Any further questions from the committee? Anything from the public? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries five to zero. Thank you. Congratulations, Mr. Levis. Moving, would you like to say anything? Just thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. Moving on to number 11, discussion and approval of the interim director of technology position. Our reference number four, I assume you want to take this just a little bit? Sure, I'm just going to be brief that, um, you know, uh, many people know um, because of the response when they send an email, uh, Dr. Burke is out on, on medical leave and um, Mr. Murphy's been uh, very involved with technology for numerous years here. He's a great resource to everybody and we definitely need a point person. Um, to work things through, and I wanted to, um, I, I want to recommend that that Mr. Murphy become our interim uh, director of technology. And again, this is just in the short term. I'm not sure how long it'll be, but uh, we need to keep things moving. And uh, and Dr. Burke uh, still is working on things, even though she needs to take care of herself and rest. But we need that point person, and uh, he's very well qualified and uh, help us continue moving forward. So. I want to recommend that he be approved as the interim uh, director of technology. Are we ready to motion? Yes. Madam Chair, 
I make a motion to affirm the recommendation of the superintendent to appoint James Murphy, interim director of technology for the district, effective November 20th, 2018. I second the motion. Any questions from the committee or discussion? Anything from the public? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Cheer votes, aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries five to zero. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. I just want to say quickly, too, that I know people, we see you here every school committee meeting, and this is something that was just kind of thrown at him when we had um, the opportunity to have live stream. So I, you know, I've never had a chance to publicly thank him for doing that. You know, uh, he has two young children, and, uh, you know, to give up the time that he does, and again, it wasn't part of his job description, but I want to publicly thank you for that. Yeah, we, we all do. Thank you so much, Mr. Murphy. Thank you. Mm. All right, moving on to number 12, Strategic Plan 3, Professional Development Presentation. I assume that's the gang in front there. Okay. <laughs> so this is our third presentation in ah, Wow. And, um, you guys getting tired? A little. <laughs> You know, we, we have like a system where we have one that we're about to present and one that we're working on at the same time, you know, we can stay ahead of it. But I think this is going to be it for a little while. And uh, this particular presentation is about professional development, which is part of our strategic plan, uh, goal three. Um, we cut out some of the language here. It basically is about what we're going to do to, to support our professionals. Uh, we're going to have differentiated job uh, embedded professional development opportunities professional innovation and risk taking and uh, collaborative cycles of improvement. Um, this year, before I talk about this year, we changed to a different model for professional development. In the past, we had PD days. Some were, some were mandatory, some were voluntary. Um, they uh, were sometimes effective and sometimes not so much. And with the new contract, we switched over to PD hours and teachers are doing their professional development in hours. And uh, that's uh, run through the district, but it's their responsibility to do the hours on their own time. So we're sort of seizing that as an opportunity to adjust how we do professional development so that we can do things maybe differently than we have done before. <coughs> and so far, the results have been uh, pretty good. Uh, in terms of, you've seen this slide before, you know, when we look at things, we try to look at them in a process to make sure that we don't put something out there that doesn't ever get evaluated again, because once we get stagnant, and we begin, we begin to see atrophy, then the quality of what we're doing begins to drop off. Um, same process we talked about before. We analyze what we need to look at in terms of trends and patterns. We verify them with other assessment types. We think about our data types and what we need to address. We find, um, we review the findings with the staff, research some school-based assessments um, to gather more information, come up with a hypothesis, and then we move on. Um, last, last meeting, I also talked about bringing in uh, people from the field who do professional development, and uh, Mr. Chase is going to talk about some PD that they do at the high school, and when he discusses it, you might hear some of this in here, because it's a very innovative and different way of doing PD, at least for us in Coventry. I know he had used a similar model in East Greenwich, but it's new for us, mm -hmm. and you'll see some of this is kind of embedded uh, in there. This actually came from the Department of Ed. This is a slide that they created. And it's just about what professional development is like in our, in our state. And, and it talks about teacher satisfaction. And what this graph basically says is that um, when teachers are in year one or two, they get the most satisfaction and find the most value out of their PD. Once teachers get to year six to 10, that drops off to, to almost nothing. And so in the beginning of their career, they get lots of support, they get lots of, of, of work done through induction coaching and working with their principals because they're going through the evaluation process. But once they clear that fifth year, it drops right off. And so we keep that in mind when we do professional development because we want to engage our, uh, our teachers because the vast majority of our teachers live at this end of this scale. They don't live on this end. But this is a state, um, a state slide. Oh, could you go back to that just for a second because I had a question, sorry, because I had a question as to why there's like nothing on the, the my, my 
professional development is relevant on the 16th. There's not even not even a blip there. Yeah. So, um, so in the state, they use um, survey work, yeah. and survey work is used to gather information about students and about schools, and they use survey work to ask teachers about their professional development experiences. And so this is what teachers reported mm -hmm. on survey work. So they talked about what they think is valuable, what they think is relevant. Now often, I mean, at almost every example, you're going to see a difference between what they is what they think is valuable and relevant, right? Yeah. The relevancy is always less than the value. Um, I was looking at them together and just saying there's a complete drop-off. The only place they actually get close together is in teachers who are in 25 years. Yeah, what's going on there? Um, that's a great question. And, and I'm not quite sure um, if that has more to do with seasoned teachers knowing exactly what they want and need Could and, be, yeah. and, and, and getting that. We want to be... Um, a school department that is aware of this data so yeah. that we address um, our teachers and their needs. And we're right. doing, and we're going to talk about it, but we're doing that through um, surveys and, and talking to teachers about what they think is uh, valuable, but what's going to be relevant in their classroom or in the job that they are um, they're doing. Thank you. Ms. Well, I, I can talk about it a little bit because sure. what we did was we, we looked at that data from RISE, and we've also done some things with some data that we collect as a district um, to look at the academics and see what that's telling us that we might have some need to CD. And we think about non-academic data, which was that last school committee presentation we saw at the Allen Park. Right. So we look at that and say, well, what's that telling us we might want to focus some CD about um, uh, best, best practices and things we've observed, um, looking at our curriculum again, things that we need to see in certain areas to complement our curriculum. Um, and then we look for patterns and sort of things and, and say, okay, now we need to talk to the principals, we need to talk to the admin and try to find out if they have any topics that they see patterns in that we need to develop some CD around. We actually also conducted a survey uh, for teachers back in June, I mean, not for teachers, for principals and assistants. What do you see as some CD needs in your building, in your area? Um, and then we look at survey work data also. So in the three, the three most important things, and, and this was written by the strategic plan team, is that we're looking at uh, meaningful professional development, which goes to the relevance on the other slide, uh, differentiated, so it's not canned and it's not one thing fits all, it's, it's different for the, those who need it. And then job embedded basically means professional development that's happening in the school department, often led by our people to make sure that it's aligned with our goals and our strategic plan. Not to say we won't bring in professionals when necessary, but the, the, the old thinking of you always had to go someplace else to get your PD, mm -hmm. it's sort of it's gone because that's mostly a sit and get model. You go someplace, you sit, and you hopefully get. Um, that's not always the most meaningful. We find that when jobs embedded, it's uh, also often hands-on, and teachers are doing work while they're getting professional development. So not only do we collect and analyze and look at all this data because what's the use of doing that if we're not going to do something with it, well, this is an example of something we actually use or did something meaningful with in our building. So that uh, CD needs uh, survey we administered to the administration, uh, principals and assistant principals last June. This is the results really compacted, watered down, and, and um, looking at just the topics that we saw strong need reported for. Um, in elementary, middle, and high school, and what kind of was across the board, these were the biggest ones. Everything from flexible clothing, things like aspirin, and, um, you know, Google, and just some other different topics that might have come up so much. Um, so those are the big topics. Right, and some of these things are big, big things. Like differentiated instruction is, is, is a big topic. We can cover that for years. Some of it is access to information. You know, Teachers want to know more about STAR and Aspen so they can get in and get the information they need so that they can move their students along. So that's just platform work, and that's the kind of stuff we can do pretty easily and pretty quickly. But something like differentiated instruction or flexible grouping, cycle of inquiry, that's a little bit uh, bigger topic that takes um, more time. So there's kind of a mix of it. And in some of these things, too, it's the difference between some of it is a level of training where you just have to train them how to use it and when they're good. And then other things are really professional development, like talking about the use of differentiated instruction, what is best practice, and how, what does that look in the classroom, and all those different things. So it's just a whole gamut, I think. We
It wasn't for, don't, 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 don't shut that off yet. I was a little confused by this when I saw it. Um, just because uh, heavily reported where there's two actual but um, it just wasn't those two things, but not strong enough to make uh, make an X or whatever. Whatever that is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one example that we discovered just recently is our district had purchased a product called Accelerated Math a number of years ago, before I was in the position I'm in now, and it's used at the middle school. And the middle school um, math coordinators, curriculum coordinators, have reached out to us to get some professional training about uh, accelerated math. And we found out, uh, kind of to our surprise, that when we purchased that program and that training are not in those jobs. Who is in that department, who is using that product, none of them receive. You know, as we go through this, there are things that we can do ourselves, but there's mm -hmm. also going to be things where we're going to have to bring in a trainer. So we had uh, struck a deal with the people at Renaissance for them to come and do a webinar and to work with our, our teachers. Um, and, you know, we kind of held the carrot out over them. We said, it's going to go one way or another. Either you're going to give us a really great deal and train our teachers, or they're not going to use the product, and then mm -hmm. next year I'm going to drop it. Right. And so you decide how you want to go with that. And they decided that they want to give us a great deal. Yeah, and, I bet they did. Train our teachers. Um, Good strategy. Yeah, and, and, and whether they know, if, they don't, if teachers don't uh, like it, yeah. it's mostly because they're not using it or not using it correctly, and then it goes away. Yeah. And we don't, sure. don't want to we want to give it uh, an opportunity for them to use it correctly. Yeah, same thing for us. We don't want to keep saying things and keep changing them if we're not sure that the people are comfortable with using it and know how to use it and it's not a good result for us. Right, right. Dave? Don, uh, the double X's, how long will it take to eliminate them? So it kind of depends on the topic. Okay. Uh, some of these topics are going to be um, pretty quick, pretty quick, and some of them. Um, I'm looking at the high school and the middle school. Is what I'm looking at. That's where I see. Uh -huh. the and most so, issues. and so, some of this stuff I think is going to happen at the district level, and some of these things are probably already being addressed at the building level. Mm -hmm. um, I can't give you a, 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 a you know a specific timeline because it all okay. depends on how this rolls through and the level of need and, and the response. Because Part of what we're building into this is an assessment. So we provide professional development, and then we need to find out how did we do, do we adjust it, and then have to we'll speak it. And so I can't tell you for certain, but these are the ones that were the top items from the principal. Now, I could do a teacher survey, and I did one in elementary, where some of the topics are the exact same topics, and some of them are a little bit different. I'm, I'm thinking because our, our children are going through all day kindergarten that this is going to improve over time. Right. Uh, one of the other problems is that those are the needs as reported by the principals. Principals, right. exactly. So yeah. the principals are deciding what the teachers need, which I think is one of the things that will, you know, what we're doing this year as well. I think sometimes you've got to be wary of whether or not the teachers agree with these things as well. Sometimes I think that's, that may be where you see some incongruence there. Right. But well, we also plan to continue this process and right. have other steps that we'll show you. And the research is pretty strong that one and done is not the way mm -hmm. to do professional development. So the goal really is not to have the hexes go away, but mm -hmm. for people to um, ratchet up their level of skill and what they're learning in that area becomes more rigorous their learning becomes deeper. That yeah. it, it really is a cycle for the learner also. Just like um, we teach kids math every single year for 12 years, but it looks different. Yeah, and, and to kind of piggyback on that, we wrote a district SEL goal mm -hmm. for teachers to use part of their evaluation model. Mm -hmm. And we quickly realized that that one goal was good for year one teachers, but it would not be good for year two teachers because they need to evolve into something different. Mm -hmm. So for, the, for three years, every year we've written an updated evolution of that goal. It's still an SEL goal, but it's, it's different because teachers move through. Mm -hmm. But when a new teacher comes in, they drop into year one, and, and it kind of just keeps cycling through. So that we're addressing those people who get to year four, five, and six and say, this is not relevant anymore, it's not valuable. So these are some of the things that we've started working on. Um, 
And it's, it's like I said, with our new TV model, it's, it's kind of exciting, but it's evolving very quickly, and we're learning a lot of things on the fly. Mm -hmm. uh, so we look at a lot of different data types. One of the things that we did is we I created with Aaron and elementary principals um, a PD board, but it's not something that I invented because they were doing a PD board at the high school and at the middle school years before that. But what we tried to do is make it a clearinghouse for professional development. So teachers could log in, select a PD, and then uh, that selection would show them um, when it was being offered, who was facilitating it, uh, you know, what the topic was, how long it was going to be. It was, it was almost uh, a, a place where they could go and find professional development. Because our teachers have to do six hours of PD in terms of, for their contract. Mm -hmm. And if we don't uh, help uh, write that narrative, we're going to have people going in a lot of different directions. And it's a lot of staff to go in a lot of directions because then what they're finding may not necessarily move back to our strategic plan or what we're trying to do as a district. So what we try to do is create opportunities that were aligned to the teacher feedback, aligned to the administrator feedback, aligned to our strategic plan, but here in-house and make it easy for people to find, to find and, and access. So it's, we're in the very beginning stages of this, but we've shared it out. We've had about 40 teachers, give or take, sign up to different classes that we're teaching. Uh, some of them are multi-part classes, and uh, we're thinking in the years to come, this could get uh, better and more robust. The Department of Ed is going to change uh, their certification requirements for teachers. They're going to be required to do a certain number of hours of professional development. And so above and beyond our six that live in the contract, there could be as many as 30 hours that they need to do per year to keep their certificate. I don't know if it's going to be 30, it might be 20, it could be 40. Oh. That hasn't been finished yet. Wow. But there will be hours. Mm -hmm. So if our teachers need to get, and I'll use the number 30, hours mm -hmm. a year for professional development, we have an opportunity to provide lots and lots of opportunities for right our teachers district. to get PD, in right PD, district. differentiated mm -hmm. PD, meaningful PD, right, right here in Hobbiton. So some that of the things sense. that we're doing um, in terms of uh, getting people access to our uh, Erin also last year created a professional development website. It's sort of a, a clearinghouse of uh, tutorials, um, uh, webinars, uh, all kinds of things about how to access Aspen, how to access STAR. So those low-hanging fruit things that I talked about before that are not big, heavy items, if somebody is self-directed, they can actually go onto her site, click on it, and end up right where they need to be, read through, and, and maybe even get what they need right from there. Mm -hmm. yeah. or extended time, so on, so the things that people ask me for multiple times, I can use the recommend in the middle of the And then the last thing I want to mention is, uh, so Erin and I work in a central office, and we often talk to principals, and we talk to the administration at central office, but we're in a bubble, and we want to make sure that we are um, aware of what teachers want and need and what they're interested in. So. One of the things we are going to try to do is form a professional development committee, which is going to have representatives from administration, from teachers, from building level, district level, just to help drive that conversation. It's not going to be heavy-handed. It's not going to be you know 12 times a year for you know three hours, just to kind of keep us innovative, keep us thinking about what teachers want and need, make it um, uh, so there's lots of buy-in instead of just coming from from me.
So, nice. you know, this, this offering right here, the very first one is running a successful reading and writing workshop. The target audience is elementary ELA teachers, the facilitators at Kathy Cancrell and Christine Mandici at Hopkins Hill School. There's one being offered on November 15th from 4 to 5.30, and there's one being offered uh, January 17th, 4 to 5.30. So that's sort of what we built. And then what happens is that, like Erin said, that jumps into a spreadsheet. So Mrs. Mandici can log into this form and see who's exactly signed, signed up, up for yeah. that, um, and she can tailor it if she wants to. So most of the presenters are people from the district, are building yeah, well, administrators. And I have teachers presenting as well. As so well, yeah, I figured you did. Well. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> so as we kind of go through this, we're going to continue to collect feedback. We're going to monitor participation. We're going to look at the effort clip to see what the feedback looks like, see where we need to make adjustments. We're going to look at all the data that we presented in the last two sessions to make sure that we're doing things that are relevant to our district goals and having impact, right? And we're going to explore um, other PD options, which I think, you guys know for that one? And then these, well, and these are just some of the PD initiatives, and I'm not going to go through all of this, but basically some of the things that have happened around SEL, some of the work that we're doing around uh, multi-tier systems of support, and then um, I want to get to um, Oprah Hour, which is something that they're doing at the high school. Yes, um, I, you want to talk about this one real quick? Yeah, I just want to also mention that we have a one And this is separate from anything we're writing. So right. Sue K is one of our teachers. She was going to come tonight, but she had a, another obligation. But she was going to speak to this. $10 Tuesdays is an AFT thing. Mm. But as far as we're concerned, if the PD is good, it, it's, it's good. It's good. And people should go. And, and so we have sent the emails out to our listserv. We've, we've talked it up. And like Erin said, uh, they said, you know, often the sessions are 85% poverty people. Wow. And they're not just all in poverty. Matter of fact, they're often off site. And, and did they really cost ten dollars a session? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the motivation. So that's how ASP kind of structures the cost of the whole thing. But it's very, it's very, um, very well attended. People are really taking um, every opportunity. Sure. Great. Good. Yeah. And that this year, um, Brooke and I, when we, we were in the summertime planning out our professional development and other things that we were doing, the, the other cycle that we really wanted was another CIA cycle, which was built on building a school culture of collaboration, inspiration, and appreciation. And in doing so, when we were looking at what we wanted to do with professional development, we were trying to keep those elements in place as well. So these are all of the early release days that we have, and there's an hour and a half built into each one of those. So on um, the dates on the left-hand side, those are your traditional PD time that's used for curriculum, curriculum instruction assessment within department time, uh, where they're looking at their curriculum, they're writing new assessments, they're comparing uh, notes together, they're grading things together, they're, they're working in their department. The other side, those other dates are for what we call ochre hour time, um, which is based on Google uh, for the past, I don't know, 20 or 25 years now have been doing what they call 20% time um, during their work days. They have one hour a day where employees can work on anything that they want, any passion project, something they're excited about that can either help them grow and develop or help the company grow and develop. So things like Gmail came out of, uh, I wanted to call it over hour. Um, <laughs> genius hour. Um, 3M sticky notes came out of uh, a genius hour time that, that they had there as well. Um, so it's interesting. I wanted to apply that to what teachers do as well. I think it's, it's a practice that happens in a lot of innovative classrooms around the country, but very, to my knowledge, no, nowhere else before uh, we were doing this in Greenwich five years ago uh, was done anywhere in schools for professional development. I, I've always had the belief, whenever I see really great 
um, things that go on in classrooms where people say, hey, here's a new best practice for what we're doing in classrooms. This is 99% of the time, it's also great practice to work with teachers too to help them learn, to help them develop, and to help assess how they're doing. So if we can go back that one more time. Um, when we presented this at the beginning of the year, we talked about, again, collaboration, inspiration, and appreciation. I said, I, I want you to think about your teachers. I think about that time that you had. I want you to love what you're doing. I want it to be something where, you ever worked on something at home that you were really excited about and you wanted to do and you lose track of time and you go right through dinner time and you don't even all of a sudden you go, oh my God, it's 10 o'clock at night and I haven't even teach dinner but I can't stop. I gotta do this one more piece of this thing because I just, I don't want to put it down. That's what I want people to be doing with this time where they're really excited. Even though they've got that hour and a half, they want to work even more on it because it's something that they're really excited about. So I asked some guiding questions. So it's, you know, uh, what can you do with that time to improve your teaching, to improve your class, classes, the, the teaching or the classroom itself there to make it better, the school, the community, or the world. What can you do with that time? Who do you want to work with? And then how do we get started? So these are really the guiding questions. What problems do you want to solve? What do you want to be able to do better? Uh, what do you want to make better? What breaks your heart about our school, about our community, about the world, and you know what can we do to change that? That's a, that's a question that really drives a lot of people. What energizes you when you think about doing it? Uh, what would you love to make or create or learn about or discover? So we've had, I think, three or four now. I think we're on our, we just had our third um, session. And we're already seeing some really interesting things come out of what we're doing. Um, we have a school-based mental health clinic that's going to be operating very soon as a result of, of these projects that people are working together to. We have a new unified Oakridge program now that's already um, embracing lots of different kids in the building in, in different ways and, and making it a, a more comfortable and better place for all kids in our schools uh, to make friends, to connect with other kids. Um, I have a whole list of them. I, I, I have exit slips as well. Um, if you wanted me to pull out and read some to you, I can. But um, what we're seeing is a lot of movement and people are excited about it. When I, when I was sitting in the back, Mrs. Matosha was there. Um, she said, oh, what are you here for? I said, oh, I'm going to talk about Okara. She goes, oh my god, I love Okara. <laughs> That's kind of the reaction that you know we get from a lot of people. People are using new technologies. They're learning about new technologies from one another. And it's kind of interesting because it starts to take on, I have a spreadsheet that people kind of put in what they're doing for the day um, so that they can kind of see what each other are doing too. So I've had some people that said, oh, I was working on something, but then I saw what these people were doing and I wanted I like to work with that. So again, that collaboration comes. And now you have more, more hands to help do big things and move big rocks. Um, we have kind of pop-ups as a, you know, ed, ed, the ed camp model of professional development. We, it kind of, we have <coughs> pop-up things sometimes. Someone will say, hey, I want to I wanna teach people how to use this, you know, new technology, whether it's Flipgrid or Duolingo or other things that we're using, and people will show up and kind of learn. I've run workshops on uh, how to get on and use Twitter as a professional development tool and how to build a professional learning network. That's been a big focus in our school, and you've probably got... How many would you say? I'm sure Twitter one of them, I do Twitter uh, people. With, uh, there's 35 or 40 teachers yeah. that are now on Twitter that are yep. trying to develop a professional learning network and talk about our school and share mm -hmm. their classrooms with the world um, in different ways to tell our story about what we're doing in our schools because of things like uh, Oprah. So mm -hmm. anyway, I don't want to. So I could go on. This is my this is one of my passion <laughs> things. So it's got. I, I'll be happy to shut up. About so so as an aside, <laughs> I, I knew I knew Tim in the high school was doing something about Twitter. When my followers jumped by, like, by 40, you know, like, yeah. I was like, why, what's so special that suddenly everybody's following me? I'm like, oh, he has to be doing something. And people are just like, who do I know on Twitter? Follow, 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 follow. Mm -hmm. um, the other reason, uh, the, 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 the main thing I wanted you to see with what, what's going on with the $10 we did, but also with over hours, that we are really thinking about PD that's innovative, that's different. It's outside of the box thinking. It's not traditional. Can I just it's, add one thing? Yes. The, the, we still have the, um, what do you call it, the selection from the, the PD board. We still, you, you have the option of using the PD board and the other traditional methods that are out there. I want to mention that as well. This does not undercut that in, in any way. If people want to use those options, it's something there that they're excited about, they absolutely can use that and they have to. So that's the benefit of doing things lots of different <laughs> ways because when you have a staff as big as ours, you address everybody's needs. And, and so that's important.
Um, so I'm not gonna read all the slides because it's busy. This is mostly for your reading later on. But I did want to highlight Erin uh, for a second, and she won't read this slide because it's her job, but I'll read it. So Erin's job, as you know, is she's a professional development coordinator. She is in charge of PD um, in, in our district. She is one of what used to be <coughs> four PD teams, and over time, it's been cut down. So she's the, she's the last person standing. And her uh, efforts had mostly been at the elementary level, and she had done a lot of work and her colleagues over time with MCSS and uh, um, PBIS and things like that. And as a result, it's pretty strong at the elementary level. But the middle school had their own PDC, and the high school never really had one at all. And so what we found is when we surveyed principals, surveyed teachers, we saw some gaps. So Erin's time has been really shifted quite a bit, and we've assigned her to spend more time in the high school than she's ever done before, and even even some time at the middle school. So even though you know elementary has only been her wheelhouse where she's done most of her work, we really switched it so most of her focus is at the middle school and high school. So she keeps office hours at those schools. She meets with teachers. She meets with administration. They they talk about things that they want to do and how she can support them. She facilitates learning. Um, sometimes she's just a resource that can pull it all together. And sometimes that's the only thing holding us up from doing something really great is having somebody to pull it all together. And then anytime somebody emails me that they don't know how to log into STAR, I forward them. <laughs> uh, this is um, a Rhode Island slide, uh, and, and we're close to the end here, so um, I'll, I'll try to be quick. So um, Rhode Island came out with their own professional learning standards. These are brand new hot, hot off the press. They kind of organize them in two ways. They have what they call system standards. What are the goals? What's the data? What are the resources? What do you need to be uh, successful? How you evaluate what it is that you're doing? And then how does your learning help uh, build and include collaboration? How does it build context? Um, these are all experiences, right? What is the learning strategy? What, how is it facilitated? So as we move forward in, in building our PD in the district, we're going to refer back to these and reference back to these so we know that we're staying aligned with um, the standards that the state has put up. And this is just the first slide again. Donald McDonald said she has a jello mold, so I want to make sure that I get done quickly. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> good. Any questions in the committee? No. Good work. It's great work. Thank you so much. Very. Right. Can I just make a just a quick yeah, comment? Sure. I think, um, and, and something that our, our administrators realize uh, that we have all these expectations of our teachers in terms of what we want them to do around working with students and all students. And, and but what's just as important is we need to make sure that we provide those same supports to our to our teachers. You know that that okay. opportunity, and I think that's part of it. That inter interaction. And when Lori came on board, she started talking about student voice and listening and. I think, you know, having a say in, in, in students having a say in their education, and we need to make sure we're doing the same thing with our, our educators. I think that's a great, you know, what, what Tim has uh, put in place with his colleagues there is, is a great way of, of um, there's still standards, there's still expectations, but using the expertise and, and giving teachers that voice, because we haven't changed the target, right? The target's still there but much more flexibility and, and accountability. And uh, so it's, it's our, you know, and as we do the budget process, that's something that we need to look at is, you know, we've been very short in terms of professional development, but we really need to look at um, whether it's through funding or creative ways to make sure that we are providing the supports, especially around, you know, we talk a lot about social emotional learning. Um, so I, I, you know, it's something that we have to be passionate about and, you know, with the committee and in, 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 in central office, we have to support our educators. Um, it's challenging, uh, to say the least, to, to do the work that we need to do. So I just want to stress that. But thank you. I thought that was great. Thank you so much. Any comments? Any comments from the public on that? Oh, Lori. Okay. I did. Yeah. I, I just want to attest to the the model change in the work um, at the high school, the passion that you hear from yeah. teachers around the work um, is really an incredible feeling. You know, if you get the opportunity to join them on one of their early release days and just sit in on some of those sessions, um, it really is invigorating. And it has, um, 
it has supported that community mm -hmm. of learners mm -hmm. in a way that I hadn't seen um, when I first came to Coventry. So um, really nice Good work. work. Good work. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, I guess we can move on to 13, which is discuss and approve commitment of funds to the school lunch. That must be you, Sarah. On? Okay, yeah, now you're on. <laughs> okay, so we finally have received all number. final invoices from Aramark. I verified that they were paid. We had some hang ups with the state where Aramark was saying invoices were paid and the state was notifying us that they were not paid. Uh, so that was really the primary delay. So the final balance that you see will be paying Aramark off for good. So hopefully we don't ever <laughs> have to have this conversation or go back to this um, model. And uh, then we can move forward. Great. Any questions for Sarah? Are we ready to move? All right. Is there a motion? I'm Jay, I make a motion to commit <coughs> general fund balance for the, for the payment to Aramark for final payment owed in the school lunch fund as of July 1st, 2018 in the amount of $213,540.87 in accordance with school committee policy number 3050. I second the motion. Any questions from the committee? Anything from the public? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do you have votes? Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries 5 to 0. Thank you so much, Sarah. Much appreciated. Um, moving on to um, EFDA, Food Service Program Credit Limit Policy Revised First Reading, uh, reference number six. Did the policy committee want to speak to this? Or did you want to speak to this, Mr. Levis? I thought maybe, uh, since this will be Dr. Dixon's last meeting as a school committee member, I thought maybe uh, if Mr. Pearson's okay, we, Dr. Dixon can uh, kind of take this. Uh, thank you. Uh, we recently had a policy committee meeting and we received information about um, how many students are in arrears in each of the schools and we were astounded that we were so really soon into the school year when there was so much money that was owed. So we looked back at our um, food service program credit limit policy and we said what kind of inducements can we put in to ensure that students pay for lunch, especially the students who can afford to pay for lunch. We always encourage students and their parents to complete forms so that if they do qualify for free or reduced lunch or breakfast, that they're able to get the food that they need. We don't want to deny anyone food. Uh, we think it's very important for a good healthy day and a good well-being for the student. Um, however, we really have such uh, large amounts owed by students so we revised our um, policy in two ways, um, and uh, I think James could talk about the grilled cheese option and the um, parking option. So do you want to carry over about grilled cheese? This is an important topic. Oh, absolutely. So, so I don't know why we're laughing. It is an important topic. It is. I think um, it was. A lot of money. Right. So, so one of the things we did is, is Mr. Levis can can. This came from uh, the food service vendor that we work with because uh, we were looking for ideas from them on how to start addressing this, this issue. And one of the ideas is adding grilled cheese to the lunch menus as a regular menu choice. Um, that way when students um, are behind on their payments, uh, we, can, we can offer that to them as a regular menu item, therefore eliminating some of the, the concerns about lunch shaming and things like that because then it will not, no longer be obvious that they're receiving a different meal. Um, I love grilled cheese. I, so do I. <laughs> I think there's a restaurant dedicated yes, to rest. just grilled we'll cheese. Have yes. Okay. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I have yeah, to in some places they call it a grilled cheese stacker. Oh. So it sounds like a gourmet, mm -hmm. a gourmet meal. Yes. Yeah. So the other issue that came to light is is the debt at the high school was uh, really a, astonishing and, mm -hmm. and much more per pupil than the other schools. And the feeling is that a lot of students can afford to pay for lunch and maybe just pocketing the money that they're getting or, or, or something. So we figured uh, out a way very easily to, uh, as Ann uh, 
uh, Dr. Dixon said, induce them to pay and, and that if they are behind at a certain point, uh, their parking privileges will be suspended and, until they settle their debt. Very clever. Um, it doesn't resolve the entire issue. We still have a lot of work, I think, continuing right. to to start looking at other ways we can reduce debt at the other. This will address the, the 10th and the, uh, sorry, 12th yeah. and 11th grades. Mm -hmm. So I have to look at 10th grade, 9th mm -hmm. grade, what we can do there, and also the middle school and elementary and what strategies we can use there. Mm -hmm. uh, but this, this should take a large chunk of the... Uh, Debt. <laughs> the debt. Sounds good. All right. Any questions to, from the committee to our two policy subcommittee members? All right. Are we ready to move on the dispense of the first reading? Young Chan make motion to dispense with the first reading of the revised food service program credit limit policy. Policy number EFDA as presented slash amended. I second the motion. Any further discussion from the committee? Anything from the public? All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries 5 to 0. And I'd just like to again thank the committee for the creative um, grilled cheese alternative and um, some of the. Chair, I sure. just have one question. Sure. When we dispense with the reading of yeah. these policies, yeah. does the public get a chance to? They the they get they they get to go onto the website. They go on the website tomorrow, so they have to go and look at it then. Yeah. So. Yeah. But basically, they wouldn't. They don't know. They what's don't know going what. On. Yeah. No, they have. To, you know. That's why we do two okay. readings. Okay. Yeah. 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 Do you think okay. that could be distributed? It'll it'll be, on the, on, the it'll be on, the on the website. It'll be on the website. We'll put it on the website mm -hmm. so that they can review it and comment. That's as Mr. Pearson said. That's why we have two readings. So we share with the school committee first, and, first then. and then we put it on the website. So it'll be on the website tomorrow. Yeah. And also in the handbooks for elementary, middle school, and high school, we make reference to these policies, policies. And there's a link. There's and the a link, link goes it. directly to the website, mm -hmm. so that if anyone looks into a handbook and clicks on a link, they will immediately go to the latest policy. So okay. nothing will be outdated. Okay. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Um, Moving on to item number 15, um, vote to approve policy subcommittee member. So um, as we all know, um, Ann has been elected to the town council. And so this is her last meeting and she still was very much interested in remaining a policy member, uh, a member of the policy subcommittee. Um, the fact that she's not a school committee member, she wouldn't have her any, any longer. She won't have a vote on that committee, but she still will be a citizen of interest of policy, and I think she would like to continue that work. Um, I don't know if the... I certainly have no problems with that. I don't know if there's any uh, questions from the committee about this. Um, Again, I, I just want to make a comment that she is a town council member. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with, with the town council being part of our to our policy where it's if that's something that's like our main purpose mm -hmm. for being here as a right. school committee member mm -hmm. you did mention that she was going to be on as a citizen but does that she could be a private citizen but she's still a town council member that, that is true. doesn't take it away from that so right I, I just want to be on record that yeah I, I'm just worried that uh, I have no problem with being I, I don't either. No. I, I like no. Ann whatsoever. Ann's you know, done wonderful. Yeah. I just don't want, I don't know, someone to say, oh, that that's that's a violation of the town charter. You know. How is well, that? A, how, just to say, just to, for clarity, we, you know, um, Mr. Anderson um, had said that that um, the committee can appoint anybody they want. However, that and he's, you know, I apologize, he's not here tonight. Uh, but he did say that it's just not a voting person. We have, when we put agendas out, um, par parents can come, anybody can come. We have different people come to the meeting. But I think it has to be clear that... Um, I'm just thinking more of Ann than I am. No, no, I'm just saying is I, I, don't, I don't think, you know, again, Mr. Anderson's, you know, your legal counsel, he, he had indicated that the committee can... We can do it. ...can do what... It, but I think it's got to be clear that it's not... She's it's not, not part of governance. Governance is is what I think in, you know, Mrs. Colony was talking about. That's the role of the school committee, and I think it has to be clear that 
um, the, the school committee still approves policy that the, you know, the practice has been at the, uh, the, the, the policy subcommittee where when there's the, you know, Dr. Dixon and Mr. Pearson, they'll vote or approve something to come forward, but it doesn't get approved till the committee, you know, approves. So, and again, I'm not an attorney and I'm not trying to play one, but I mean, that was, I was asked that question before. I just want to be clear about what the, the role is. Um, again, then I, you know, I, it's, 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 I have nothing to do with the decision, but I, I just wanted to be clear. Mr. Anderson was asked the question if it was appropriate and he had indicated that, you know, it is appropriate or it wouldn't be on the, uh, the agenda, but it's still the committee's decision. So I do have one question to the sub, the present subcommittee. Um, the notion that votes are taken, so that would no longer happen, or do you think a, another school committee member should sit on that that committee so that votes that need to be taken, obviously, Mr. Pearson, you're not just going to vote for your, by yourself to bring it forward. So, or... We could. could. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm of... Uh, I'll, do you mind if I go first? I think one, once we have refilled um, the vacant seat, yes. Um, you know, maybe that's something we look at because I, think I about really someone. would be more comfortable with two school committee yes. members sitting on that subcommittee. I, I think that's probably that a good be, idea. That yeah. would be what I would think. Too. Yeah. And, you know, as a as a school committee mm -hmm. member, I would want two people. Well, if there are school votes that have members, to be taken, then right. and Ann can't vote, then certainly right. we need another su a subcommittee member to be a school committee person. But Ann could bring a great perspective too. Well, I, exactly. I mean, I think she would like to continue the work because, you know, basically you both have started this work and should like to see it to conclusion. If there is any, um, I think I could certainly defend this position to anybody that would ask me about it. If there's some kind of rumor that's started or whatever, I mean, ultimately, like Mr. Leva says, any policy that's approved still has to come before this body. So, if someone says, "Well, she's influencing the policies of the school committee of the school district," well, maybe she is, but so would any citizen that was sitting on a subcommittee that we and obviously we don't have a lot of subcommittees, but th theoretically we could have multiple and have citizens from Coventry sitting on that. Not, maybe not even citizens. I'm um, just people that are experts in certain fields sitting on a subcommittee with the leadership basically being the school committee, obviously, but certainly um, other people being certainly available to sit on those subcommittees. So I have no problem with um, defending that position. And as long as you're comfortable with it, I think we could probably move on. Well, just for clarification, at the uh, is this on? For, yep. clar for, for clarification, mm -hmm. yeah, you added on. At the at, for clarification, at the policy subcommittee, um, there is a discussion of um, policies. Um, some of them are old; they're being revised. Right. Some of them are new ones that need to be developed. As, um, mm -hmm. Mr. Anderson is usually at the meetings. Mr. Levis has been at every single meeting. So right. has James and I. Mm -hmm. And um, what we do is discuss and say, is this ready to go to the school committee for a decision? Mm -hmm. So that's all we're doing is we're saying, is it ready for the school committee? Mm -hmm. And once it gets to the school committee, it, there is a first reading, a second reading, so you have ample opportunity to uh, make decisions. Right. So that's simply what is happening. When we first started two and a half years ago, we never even... We never even really put in the minutes that we were voting on anything to send it to the school committee. We just sort of said, yeah, we think it's ready. And exactly. we, just, we just decided to make it a little bit more formal so that if um, any of our minutes were read, they would people would know that um, a decision has been made that it was ready for you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it gets to you and you feel that it's not ready. Yes, and sometimes true. it gets to you when you approve and we feel, you know, we've got to add, you know, grilled cheese sandwiches and <laughs> it comes back to you. I mean, that seems minor, no, but I mean, I know I get it, you. That, mm -hmm. it actually is a very, very serious, uh, serious, serious it change. Is. Oh, yes. It is, yes, very definitely. Very serious change. All right. Uh, are we ready to move? Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve the appointment of Dr. Ann Dixon to the Policy Subcommittee as a... Public member? I'm a citizen. As she's a citizen. Yeah. That's what I am. She will be a citizen, so. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. She'll be a citizen. So this way. Uh, 
And I think it might be more appropriate for someone else to second that. I'm not going to second it. I'm not going to vote. Is there a second on that? I'll second that. Okay. Um, before we take the vote, are there any comments from the citizens gathered or questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Motion carries. One, two, three, four. Four to zero. Four to zero. With an abstention from Ian. Okay. Are there any subcommittee updates? Um, as we mentioned at the last meeting, the uh, Career and Technical Education Committee concluded its work. We had four meetings. And Mrs. Ferguson will be making a presentation to the school committee uh, about some of the recommendations that the committee made. The members of that committee were Mrs. Patno, Mr. Florio, um, with me, and Mrs. Ferguson. So she will be asking for permission to go on a, a future agenda. Um, the subcommittee for the superintendent's evaluation has concluded its work. And um, you'll notice that there were two motions on the agenda today. And uh, that concludes the work of our particular group. And uh, the sub policy subcommittee met uh, just before this meeting. And we proceeded along with our agenda. And we'll be continuing to work our next meeting is at the beginning of December. I just want to say um, one thing about the subcommittee. Um, I have gotten several, uh, I, I don't know if you want to call complaints or requests to change the time of the policy sub subcommittee to a little bit later so more people could attend. Mm -hmm. So that, I just wanted to put that out. Well, one thing's for sure. If I did, not knowing that Ian was going to even want to sit on the subcommittee, I did um, mention to the superintendent that I would be willing to be the other uh, school committee member if no one else wanted to do it but that it might have to start a little later because <laughs> uh, I can only take so much time off from work. There's, so. These are just a, a few people from my yeah. district mentioned yeah. it. No, I get it. What time Fantastic. is your, is that what, four? I'd like to attend because once in a while. We, we meet from four to six and it's yeah. usually just immediately before the school, the school committee, committee meeting. Yeah. Yeah, um, the problem in us meeting later, uh, a couple of problems. One is that um, we have to find a place to meet, a public place to meet. Right. And the school administration building is usually closed after 6 o'clock, so that requires someone to open the door for us. Mm -hmm. So with the uh, subcommittee meeting for the career and technical education, we were meeting in the green room of the high school. Right. And because there is a janitor there on duty, and we can arrange with the director of facilities to have the janitor keep the door open for us. Mm -hmm. um, so a meeting place has been a little bit of a problem for us, or a challenge. Uh, we have overcome that, and it's certainly possible for us to think about new times. Well, whoever does, and if, you know, when we finally settle up the membership, they can decide on that, I guess. I think we can we can do that. I think it's just the reality is going to be we'll just have fewer meetings. I mean, I think part of it is that, I mean, there's only so many nights, and and we kind of eliminate Friday nights and. There are a lot of meetings that people are, so that's the, you know, because our, our, our policies are, we, we, we feel such an urgent sense of urgency. I think tonight was like the 60th, the 60th. time we've met in, in two years, yeah. which is pretty significant. I, I guarantee there are probably not another district that's met 60 times in two years on policy work. No, I, so that, that's all I'm saying. I, I don't disagree. I mean, we, we want to have... You yeah. Know, if there are people that, like, sure. like I said, I would love to come, but yeah. I work till five. Yeah. Most well, people work till five. Yeah. I don't get back in the city till six usually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, were you finished, Ann? I am. Yes. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Any questions for the subcommittee updates? Seeing none, we can move on to the superintendent's report. Mr. Levis. So I'm going to just jump around a little bit. First, I, I'd like to just address the F20, FY20 budget calendar. Um, that came out to us. Um, was it? I think it was. Was it last week? Uh, bear with me. I apologize. Last week, and um, in you know, in, in fairness, to Mr. Arnett, there was just you know, he 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 was um, here alone. Mr. Waziku was on vacation, and you know, he came across and said, "Oh, geez, we you know, we need to do something." Whereas last year, if you remember, it came out like in December. And our first meeting was in December. So, you know, in 
both Mrs. Mandrelli and Miss Mandrelli and I have met with him, and, and there was no intent on his part, you know. Um, and uh, he's still apologetic about that. But I don't want to be clear and on his end. You know, I think he's been working very well with us, and we really appreciate having him there. Um, and I think he understands some of the needs that we have and some of the concerns we've articulated in the past. And um, he's been very supportive, so I, I appreciate that. Um, I think what's important is um, what's, what's a primary responsibility right now is that we have a meeting December 10th as you see on the um, the resolution and our first school committee meeting is December 13th. Um, we were clear with Mr. Uh, Arnett that um, to go forward with the 10th, and we understand because of this all day resolution how things have to be backed up. We do understand that. But our presentation, two parts to it. One is that we're going to have to work uh, very um, and I love that, you know, I say the we part, but it really falls on Sarah between you and me. But we have to work really aggressively putting something together with our best uh, estimates. Um, you know, so many variables won't be known. Um, I want to make sure that we share that with the committee. So there's two ways for me to do that is one is just to share it as I would in BCC everybody and have your feedback. Um, the other part is to try to pull something together. I just don't know how possible that will be. Um, so, um, and we can we can discuss that offline because that's not a violation. You know, trying to, if we want to try to coordinate a meeting, that's not a violation of open meetings. Um, so that's that's the first part. Um, I think you'll see that's an aggressive timeline. You know, we have uh, sent out some information to our staff um, and our administrators around around the budget process, but it really just pushes things. Um, from a budget perspective, um, from a revenue perspective, from an expenditure perspective, there's so many moving parts. So, but I think Mr. Arnett is is understanding of that, and he will articulate that. I think that's what's important is to have some, you know, some, you know, at least presence on the municipal side, understanding that we are not playing games, we're not trying to be vague. We are going to try to be, you know, we do know what our contractual obligations are, and that's something that I think. Uh, he's going to start with and um in fact and and um he had shared with me another revised resolution potential i don't know where it's going to go and it doesn't change anything but what it does is it does put on the date that we are going to come before you um so it's something we already scheduled a school committee meeting but we're going to come before you and um we would get your final approval for the budget we put forward um but that hasn't been approved or presented to this town council i don't know if that will be but he had shared something with me, and again, I'm 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 not gonna share that only because, um, in fairness to him, that would need to go before the the, the town council first. But um, so it's an aggressive timeline. Yes, I, I have a couple I have a couple of uh, questions. Uh, are we gonna know how much money we're getting from the state? We never do. By, by, no, we don't. We never do. By Tuesday, May 14th. That's one question. And like Kathy says, we never know. The other question is, the 14th and 16th, isn't that around when we have graduation at the high school? We have it in June. We have in it in June. June. Yeah, right. yeah, we have it in June. June. Right. So, so, so we, you know, if you remember two years ago in um, May, late April, we were cut 500 and some thousand dollars from the Department of Ed what the projected uh, aid was going to be. And then a week later, we were cut $238,000 in federal aid. So we know that the aid's always a variable. Um, so, you know, we'll, you know, so no matter what number is given, it's always a variable. Remember, they come out with the March 1st data point, which is what they use to um, give us our final aid number. So, um, you know, but as long as we're on the same page and we understand that, we understand what our contractual obligations, we understand we're not aware, we have, you know, we're not sure what our health care costs are going to be, what our energy costs are going to be, uh, our other insurance costs are going to be. So that's that's basically what we'll be presenting. We have to also be aware we cut 21.6 positions. Um, we also have to be aware that we have zero dollars for capital, 
and that's something that I believe Mr. Arnett uh, is very much on board. Um, I went to a meeting Friday on the school building authority, and um, there's there's funds that will be available just for Coventry, but without um, without any capital funds and without meeting that threshold, that that, that percentage, one percent, two percent, three percent, we're not gonna, you know, it's gonna that that will be a barrier for us receiving the funds. Um, so he's aware of all that, and I, I believe that um, that's a very positive for us. You know, and as far as the 14th and 16th, I have reached out to the town to see what their plan for um, the all-day referendum is, but I don't have an answer yet. So, in terms of where that would be. any surprises this year though right like like with Aramark and no, no. <laughs> so, okay that that wasn't a surprise though that yeah, we know. right yeah. Yeah, yeah that was carried year after year after year so I think um, yeah and I, I think one thing that's working in our favor as we said before is just the effort that everybody's put in in terms of uh, making sure that we have accurate data that's being reported so that's going to be helpful so thank you all right. All right. Um, I'm going to jump to the, the first snowstorm. Um, it seems like it was eons ago, but it, but it wasn't. And one of the things, is, just to be clear for individuals, is that you know we have a very old fleet um, of vehicles, and um, we do a delay for a reason. We do a delay so that we can make sure that the parking lots and the sidewalks are safe for our our um, our students and our staff. And what happens is, um, you know, I think they, you know, we were expecting, as many people were, we were expecting rain to come overnight, melt the snow, and it didn't happen. You know, four in the morning, Jason's calling me and saying, we have, you know, four to six inches and, and you know, give me as much a delay as possible. I'm thinking like, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to delay. You know, I looked out my window and, it, you know, it looked pretty good. So, but I know, you know, so anyways, we, we ended up doing the hour delay. And, and it's frustrating. Um, I'm, I'm going to say my, my frustration because we got school open in time with the hour delay. But I had parents complaining that, you know, people are taking their time in the parking lot. They're lined up. And when I asked what time people were lined up, they were lined up like maybe 15 minutes after the regular time. And so we have an hour delay. And I understand the part about sometimes people having to get to work, but we have to clear the parking lots. And, and I did the same thing with educators. We had people, I sent an email out to people and it's like, I, I appreciate, you know, when people want to get into work an hour early, you don't want to tell people not to come to work early, but on days of delays, when, when, when Johnny always parks his car right here and Susie comes in and parks the car there, you know, and then, uh, you know, Steve comes over and parks the car there and we're trying to plow 
it like doubled the time because they're trying to go with these and, and, and look at our material, you know, look at the plows that we have, you know, and we tell the story about people complained at Oak Haven because we have these junk vehicles there. They wanted to get them off the, the lot. Those are our vehicles. They're not junk. That's what we use, you know, and that's, that's a true story. So I just asked, I thought, I thought our facilities people and our maintenance people, custodians did a great job under the conditions. Um, but I'm, I'm just asking for help from the community and from our own staff that, you know, like we need the time to do the delay. If we do a delay, it's to make it safe. And so, um, you know, I just wanted to, to bring that forward. But I, I appreciate the work that everybody did and uh, to get us in school. Um, it was a freak snowstorm, and um, but I think they did a great job. So I want to compliment them on that. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is, is uh, school safety in terms of our we put this on the agenda every time and we had a meeting the other day with our administrators we meet on a regular basis with the with the police the fire the EMA they have us they have a, a district safety meeting and then we meet afterwards um, and we talk about our safety plans we talk about communication which is crucial so we met the other day with uh, Mr. Martin uh, central office administrators and our, and our building principals just to kind of look at map out how we're going to meet going forward as a district um, we, again, we put together safety plans. They have to be approved. We send them actually to the state police. There's guidelines. Um, you know, we're, we're going to, we, we talked about our, our secure, our, we have that secure our, our city report, which, um, you know, we've met with the police, went, met with the school committee. We put together um, proposals for funding. We tried to get funding. Uh, we were able to get emergency funding for some of that um, approved from RIDE. But um, we didn't get funding that we approved. We, we requested funding through the COPS grant. We did not receive that. Only two districts in the state received that. So we're bringing that back to the table. Um, and I need to talk, speak with the committee. I'll put it on our December 13th agenda and see if we want to discuss going forward with the town. My understanding is the council hasn't met and seen that report and discussed it like we did. And, and my feeling is that if the the town council needs to get that from the town and do their piece. Um, so when we get together, we're all kind of on the same page because that was our initial intent. And um, if the committee feels differently, then, then you can let me know. But just so you know that we meet on a regular basis. We look at, at safety in, in, in a whole bunch of different areas. And, um, you know, we work, like I said, we work very closely with the police and very closely with the fire. Um, and, uh, you know, now we have a, another partner, DHS and Mr. Robillard and, and the support that they're willing to do and also working with CCAP because we talk about safety. We also talk about mental health and the needs of our individuals and providing that type of support. And so um, the next to last thing I want to talk about is and I put on the agenda the middle school incident when it was uh, that was going to discuss the incident took place last week. As we know, we had an incident um, what was reported to us yesterday morning. Um, and I, I just want to state that, you know, like none of us, um, you know, I, I say this all the time, people, I'm sure you're sick of hearing me say, but that I'm a parent too, and, and I deal with these things as a parent. And when I get a, when I get a, a call or an email like, like Mr. Lucian Center, I sent out, and I said this in my email, I get a nauseous feeling. You know, I, I, it's, it's a horrific feeling. Um, we have you know, 1140 students at the middle school. And it's amazing over, I don't know, what, what maybe a six week period of time, three incidents um, that took place, different types of incidents. But the, the, the issue is that um, it, it, it turns how people feel. When I say people, it's not just the parents and the students, but our staff, you know, and creates this culture. We work so hard to create this supportive culture uh, putting a lot of programs in place, and yet how these individuals can turn that around and, and help us feel unsafe. And, and I've received so many emails, and I respond. If I've missed one, if I haven't responded, it's because I missed one. Um, but I, I was saying I was up in the wee, morning, wee hours of the morning responding to emails and, and telling people what I honestly feel, that, that safety is a primary responsibility for us. Um, and we reflect on these and just, you know, like some one parent said to me about, well, what is this? Uh, what's the word we say when it's not a credible threat? Right. So I got a few people. And so then somebody even put out the dictionary of what 
a definition of a credible threat is. And so when we get a report of anything like this, the police are involved immediately. And they go and usually identify the individuals or we spend time identifying. I'll give you the example that took place at this time. Uh, when it was reported to the police, there were four police officers dealing with this overnight, right? So there's a huge cost to the community just in terms of dollars, n never mind everything else. Um, but they determine if somebody's saying they have weapons or they're going to do something, the police determine is it a credible threat by do they even have access to weapons, right? Is there even access remotely? Um, is there a plan? And, you know, so we investigate and we do our own piece in terms of, you know, and they'll look at what consequences and, and there are laws and whether people like it or not, there's certain laws that you have to follow and abide by. And there's only certain things that can be charged and, and, um, and, uh, you know, uh, I may not like certain things either. I, I wish sometimes consequences might be harsher, um, but it is what it is. And, and um, you know, we have to allow the law to, to go its course. But from a school perspective, my responsibility as superintendent is to make sure that these things don't become a pattern and don't happen. And so we look at individual situations and we look at what can we do to make sure people feel safe? What can we make sure that these individuals aren't going to continue this behavior? What can we do to make sure, assess if these individuals need help, which we do in every single case. Every single case when somebody makes a threat, we, we look at something. And I know people don't like it, but I can't tell individuals what we're going to do. And, and, and you know, it's not because Craig doesn't want to. It's that as much as individuals may not like it, these individuals, while you may not feel like they should have rights based on their behavior, they have rights and we have to protect them. But we also have to protect everybody else. I had a parent send an email to me and said, well, I appreciate your, your email and your personal, you know, sharing your personal feelings, but you didn't have to do, you know, look at this at 8.15. You didn't have to do this in the morning. You didn't have to do this today. And I felt like, you know, all right. I, one thing I know is I cannot tell people how to feel, right? I have no right to tell people how to feel. But the, 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 the same is true for me. I was there in the morning, early yesterday morning, trying to work on a grant, and I got a phone call from Mr. Lucian. And what, what that phone call, after we talked about it, the first thing I think about is how this impacts everybody. You know, I wish I couldn't. I wish sometimes I could shut it off. But just so you know where I come from, every single day I look around here, all these staff people that are here, right, they're my responsibility every day. Every single student, almost 5,000 of them every day are my responsibility. Um, and not a day. So when we have a snowstorm, when there's a Friday night, when there's a dance, right? When there's a dance in this school system, I'm hoping and praying to God I do not get a phone call that night. Because like many of us, I've experienced dances with my own friends and things like that where somebody hasn't come home that night, right? So whether that means anything to the public or not, I had a horrible day yesterday, too, because I worry about everybody, because I'm responsible. At the end of the day, my job is to make sure the committee knows that I'm doing everything in my power. Um, so people need to, you know, I, I hope people understand that. We're going to take every measure possible to make sure that this doesn't happen again with these individuals. But here's, here's part of the issue is that I can't control what goes on at the house. We have to work with the child when they come to school there's no excuses. We have to work with that individual. And we have to work with those parents, too, whether they want to work with us or not. That's our responsibility. We are a public school. But I don't control what people do on Snapchat, unfortunately. I don't control what adults do on, on Facebook. You know, Mr. Cowart, you know, had to contact um, a couple of Facebook pages. And, and again, I, I stay off it as much as I can. I use it for my own personal family and my my relatives in Alaska and my cousin's son that plays football at Penn State, and that's what I do with Facebook. I stay off of all the local stuff, but other people go and look at it, and, and my concern is what adults are doing. You know, I don't know about you, but I, when I see some of the behavior and some of the things that, that adults, and it's not everybody, but it's deplorable. And when people start to question me or challenge me about, well, what are you going to do about this? You know, I share with people, I was talking about tonight. Every single day I'm on Facebook, I'm on Internet, I'm on social media that my daughter, who's 23 years old, I check everything that she does every day. My son's 17 in high school. I check everything, and I give him feedback because that's what I need to do. My daughter's a teacher. 
And I still get concerned, and I said this before, if, if she's someplace where people are going to look and say, she's a teacher, because, you know, people today, young kids today, everybody's friends with them on Facebook. Everybody's friends. You know, I might have like six friends or whatever. And, you know, and probably an old Facebook page that I had that I set up that I forgot the passwords. One of my friends, you know, that's the reality of it. But my daughter has like a thousand friends. And so this is how I act as a parent. Um, we can't control that. I wish we could. I just want you to know that um, we take it very seriously. We're going to put as much in place as we can for individuals and make sure that people, your, your children, our staff feel safe. Um, we're going to actually, in this case, and we've talked about it, uh, Mr. Lucian and I, and I've talked to the colonel, we're going to do reach out. We're going to meet with the students at the middle school. We're we'll, 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 we going to meet next Monday. We're going to plan and we'll communicate to parents. We're going to meet with the students, however we do that, with the police and with myself and Mr. Lucian. And we're going to talk to them about what's been going on and have a conversation. Um, we're going to make sure that we have people in the schools that if children are concerned, your children are concerned, or if our teachers see that they can talk to somebody, right? But we're also going to hold a forum for parents too. Um, and the police will be part of that, the colonel will be part of that, some of his officers, I will be there, we'll have administration. Um, because I want to get some of the facts out too, that while this is horrific, and, and like I said, I can only imagine if you have children, I know, I know some of you have children, I received emails, I want to make sure that we're not sitting on this and saying it's not important. We're not, you know, our, our process is that as soon as we find out something's going on, we talk about it and we communicate to parents. And it's one of those no-win situations because do we hold off and then you already, you probably already know about it anyways, but we want you to know that we're aware of it and we're doing something about it. Um, and that's been our plan. And since I've been here, that's been when it started with the creepy clown and we had other issues going on. We try to communicate as much as we can to keep people informed. I can't control that other students, even adults, are giving misinformation out there and it gets posted. I was called by Channel 12 yesterday and talking about all these things that happened and, and it was the first four things that they asked me about hadn't even transpired. Um, and I understand how that information gets out there and, and it instills a lot of nervousness in people. But I want you to know that we're not sitting down, you know, Four individuals over the last X number of weeks, I don't know how many weeks it's been, to be honest with you, but four individuals have turned things around. Um, and I don't know what we can do to have stopped those individuals from doing things. I think what we, what we, what we focused on, though, and like I said, I was there today. They had the Career Tech Center there. We had students in assemblies. You know, there's a lot of good activity going on. Um, we're going to make sure that we address that those, those other issues, I'm going to be meeting, what I can say is I'm meeting with every family and we're going to put things in place. Um, we're going to make sure that at least with these individuals, this never happens again. Um, but, you know, we're going to talk about this. We, need, we do need to figure this out, but we also need the parental support. And we get a lot of support from a lot of parents. But there are individuals where that, you know, I can't control what they do on the internet. I can't control what they do at home. And that's, that's, 50%, and this is probably a low estimate of what we deal with in school today, and, and as young as the fourth and fifth grade, we were dealing with some issues recently, starts with, a lot of it was social media, it starts outside and gets carried in, and it's challenging because the law, you know, when it comes to bullying and cyberbullying, we have a part in that, but we can't control all of that. And I don't have a solution. We had an assembly last spring. You know, one thing I say, and I reiterate this all the time about social media, we marketed it. We put it on Facebook. We send emails to every single individual that's on our listserv, right? We had the state police, uh, the, the, the foremost expert in the state, come to this because we know this is a serious issue, just like we know vaping is, and we'll be coming forward with what we think we're going to try to do with vaping. It's a serious issue everywhere. When we had that event, we had the high school auditorium. Um, four teachers and three parents came to it. Now, we're saying this is a major issue, you know. All you have to do is when, when anything happens, even when things don't happen in town, go to some of those popular Facebook pages and look what people post and how they handle and how they carry themselves. I can tell you, if you saw a child do some of that and, and somehow your child had access, you'd be sending me an email. And yet it's become socially acceptable. 
Um, you know, we have to talk in dialogue. We recognize that, you know, it's, it's not acceptable. It's not acceptable to me. It's definitely not acceptable to anybody what's transpired recently. Uh, and we definitely need to figure it out. You know, you heard earlier we talk about social emotional learning. And we're putting a lot of emphasis in that. You know, in Coventry, we're above the state average in terms of our, our children that have seen domestic abuse, you know, which is pretty jumped out at me when you look at the kids count. All you do, look at kids count data. Look at some of the statistics around us, you know, uh, probably, you know, and we, we're, we're working on trauma-informed. We've been doing mental health first aid with, with some of our staff. We're going to continue that because we realize that a lot of kids come to to being educated, they come into the classroom and they're incapable of learning. And it's not an excuse for what's transpired recently, but just, you know, know that we are doing, we, we, we're never doing the best we can because we constantly need to improve. But if we're not in this together, if we point the finger and if that's the way that, that this goes down in, in, in any, any conflict, then we're not going to, we're not going to, accomplish what we need to accomplish, you know. So this is my way of saying that, you know, we're going to do what we need to do. We will have a parent forum, probably not next week, it'll be the following week. We'll, we'll work with the kids next week. But we need parental support, you know. Um, I had a parent say to me in an email how she's on the sidelines, you know. It's like, don't be on the sidelines, you know. I don't consider myself on the sidelines in my children's education. You know, I'm very engaged. Am I in the school all the time? No, but I'm engaged. I'm communicating. Um, and they both know that. And I think we need partners in this. So um, it's, it's, you know, I've said enough about it. I just want the community to know and that this is a very, very serious matter. We take it serious. The police take it serious. Um, and we are going to make sure that, that at least with these individuals, this type of incident doesn't happen again. And we want to thank the people. We found out about this because parents and students shared the information with the police. So we thank the people that do in, get involved and give us that information. Um, but we definitely, um, definitely feel that, you know, there, th we need to do as much as we can as a community to, to, to eradicate this. It's just, it's, uh, it's a horrible situation. So I just wanted to state that. And, and if people have questions or comments about it, I'm more than willing to, uh, to address that. Yeah, do you want to come up? Well, we need um, to, identify to identify yourself. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, my name is Gina Cosio. I'm a parent. Um, Could we have your address, too, please? Mm -hmm. Could we have your address as well, please? Of course. 259 Single Thing, Coventry. Thank you. Um, one of the things, you know, I feel as though I'm hearing this roundabout talk and my concern is what are you going to do about the individuals? What example are you going to set with these students? And what precedent are you going to take to ensure that these students are dissuaded against making these types of threats in school? Um, what are their consequences? Uh, I know you're going to say the law says this, the law says that, but I do know that when children and teachers feel threatened at an unsafe school, it is permissible to give suspension. So if you can start possibly by setting the example and following through, you won't just have to keep addressing the same individual, the same individual. It would almost be kind of like a preventing it, this to happen and not to say to uh, put the fear of God in them, but these kids need to understand that there are consequences. Okay, um, in-house suspension does not work. Um, we all know that. So as concerned parents, what is going to be done for those to stop this from happening? You said we had, what, 1170 in the middle school right now? What did you say? Oh, 1140. Okay, 1140. Mm -hmm. How do you expect Mr. Lucian and his administration to discipline most of their jobs 
while housing these students in one small school. Classrooms are maximized. How, how, do, you, how do you get away from that? And, and I think parents are concerned about this. And, I, and I'm, I'm very disappointed at the small number of representation tonight, honestly. I mean, I, I know you don't want to suspend, you don't want to do this, but where does the example get set? So let me, uh, let me respond. So nobody's saying, you know, there's two parts of this, that nobody's saying that we don't agree with, with um, certain types of consequences of suspension. So for most individuals, so I, I disagree, um, in school suspension, for most, most individuals, right? So when you say 1,140, you know, we're not disciplining 1,140 individuals. Most individuals, the whole idea with certain consequences is it deters them from other behavior. But then we have individuals where it doesn't deter, and we have to do other alternative situations. So um, I don't look at what's going to transpire in this as just a slap on the wrist and just, you know, but I'm not going to get into specifics, just like if it was your child, I'm not going to get into specifics. But as superintendent, I'm going to make sure uh, that these situations, at least with these individuals, don't happen again. But we're also going to look and see for any individual that would do a behavior like this or action, do other things that we need to do. Because if you look at all these other events that are happening around the country, how many times are people saying, well, we knew of this, but nothing was done. We're going to make sure that if someone has, needs help, we're going to give them the help too. doesn't mean there aren't consequences, right? So you can do both, right? So, but I'm not going to get into the specifics of, of the individuals. We spend a lot of, I, I agree, we spend a lot of time, but we also spend a lot of time with behavioral issues with adults. Mr. Lucian and I were talking about six individuals last year, right? Six parents, well, six parents had to be removed by the police because they wouldn't. We had a rescue come, and this isn't everybody, but what I'm saying is it's that's not just not, a... That's not my issue well, right it, now, because you can't fix the parents. Right, but, but what I'm saying is that I can't fix anybody. It's a partnership, but we can make sure that these individuals, that with these individuals, this won't happen again. That's what I can tell you. Not in, not in our schools. I'm not going to get into the details of it. That's what I'm not going to get into. Well, as the person who knows about the criminal justice system, do you want me to log in on this? Or do you want to let Laurie speak for us? Uh, uh, since it's my meeting, I guess I'm going to let Lowry speak first. I, I can um, assure you that um, all of the school's uh, codes of conduct have been reviewed every year. If you read the code of conduct and the consequences associated with those behaviors, it is being followed and implemented. So if you have not read the Code of Conduct recently, I would encourage you to do that because that's what's being followed. If you have some input on recommended considerations for changes in the future around the Code of Conduct, I would suggest you forward that to administration for possible consideration as they look at that policy and code of conduct every year and bring it forward to school committee for approval. That's not what she's looking for. I know what you're looking for. As a, as a person who worked with juvenile probation and worked family court, that's where you want them to go. You expect them to go to family court. Am I correct? No, that's not what I'm saying. Well, what, you, you're, you're, looking, you're looking for some type Well, the action is, there, there's several types of action. The first one is the juvenile hearing board. The police could refer the matter to the juvenile hearing board where they get community service and some form of discipline. Okay? That's the first one. The second one is, you have to understand that, I know this, a lot of students have relatives or where they come from, they're either, they could be in the ACI, 
They could have mothers and fathers in the ACI. You don't know. You don't know if they're in state custody. You, we really don't know exactly what's happening with them. So to say, to say we want this done, the state, number one, the state's not going to allow it because DCYF is involved, if they are involved. The second point is, if they're on juvenile probation, it, they, they are found in violation of the pro probation, and then they go to the training school. I don't understand what you're looking for, though. Well, I agree with that as an example. Could, could we, could we, you, you need, to, excuse me, please, you need to identify yourself, come to the podium, and <coughs> and give your address, please. This is not a free-for-all meeting. You really have to do protocol, so we appreciate your input, but I don't want people arguing back and forth with individual members of my committee. So if you could yeah, just yeah. please come forward, yeah. that'd be great. I apologize. That's okay. No, that's, all right. that's okay. I'm sure you don't usually come to meetings. I get it. I have three daughters. Sure. Them. Yeah. of their education. The last two years have been quite challenging as a mother. On December 14, 2012, I was 20 minutes away from the incident at Sandy Hook. And if any of you can remember that, and any of you have children, you remember that you hugged your children that day. You remembered how awful that felt. You remembered I have co colleagues that I work with that have personal relationships with some of the parents that lost their children that day. So I understand we don't take these threats lightly. However, what has happened over the last three weeks, four times, Superintendent, I'm that parent that sent you that email. You didn't get the email at 815. I'm very sure that, right? That wasn't a direct dig at you. No, no. This is how much destruction this one child has caused for everybody today. And to have to be on your way to work and turn around because you feel like your child is not going to come home, that's not okay. So how are you, to answer your question, <coughs> how are you going to prevent other kids from knowing they're doing this and thinking this is okay? How are you going to set an example with this one child? Like, wait a week? If you kick a dog a week after he pees on the floor, is, is, is that effective? You're going to wait a week to bring the police into the school system and address the student. This should be addressed now. Every single other student that wants to try and do this should know this isn't okay because you need to set a precedent. You need to make an example. You need to make every other 1,140 students know if they do this, they will not come back to college. They will not be allowed through those front doors. It's unacceptable. And that's what we want as parents. That's what we're looking for. We're not looking for you to break any laws or... No, you want them expelled. Laws, but it, it, that, that's how we feel. That's how passionate we feel about this. Four incidents in three weeks. You want them gone, is what you're saying. You want them kicked out of the system. I, I don't know what the threat is. None of us do. Okay. Because you won't publicize that. I get that. But whatever they... You have to go daughter, by... You want to know what my daughters are saying about what happened? What? They're just morons, Tom. None of that... None of that's true. They're not going to do that. How do we know that? So, so part of that, though, comes back to the whole trust piece, too, right? I get what you're saying. Like, this is, we've had meetings, we've met on this constantly, right? So when you ask me, how can I stop? The way I stop is for everybody to be eternally vigilant, because I can't control when Susie and Johnny get into a, a relationship, and they get into a fight, and they start going back and forth, and then Johnny's friends feels bad and gets on and starts doing some. We deal with this at the high school. We used to deal with just at the high school. Now we deal with it in grades four and five, right? So part of it is that you can put all the responsibility on the school and we'll do everything we can do. But, you know, we can't even check a student's phone, right? You do realize that there's state law that allow we cannot go and check a student's phone unless it's like this on and we see what's on. But we cannot look at different things. But as a parent, we need parents to be eternally vigilant too. 
And that's what I'm saying. So that how can I can I guarantee this will not happen again? I can't. I don't think I could ever guarantee. But you're making the assumption that we are doing nothing about the situation now. And I would ask you not to make that assumption. The fact that I'm not going to sh sit there and, and, and sit here and tell you exactly what we're going to do. But I would ask you to have faith. And I know it's hard because I, like I said, I have children too. I got, I get your point and your meeting there. What my my response to your email was that, or to to you is that this impacts everybody exactly. Well, this is impacting everybody, and it's not okay. And so we have to figure out when we look at these individuals, can we help them also? Right? We're not going to just discard them. Can we help them? Because that's our responsibility. But to make the assumption that there are no consequences is just not. You can make that assumption, but I don't think that's a fair assumption of what we do and who we are. Um, we definitely don't want this. The child needs to know as well, correct? You got you gotta tell that kid. Thank you. Thank you. Were there any other there? Okay. So the um the last part of my report is about Dr. Ian Dixon. I do too. She needs a break. Okay, I, I yeah, really go, go. I'm, you're, okay. you're, it's your meeting. She, well, she wants to be able to appreciate what you say about her. And, <laughs> yeah, and I'm yeah. having trouble. If I get up, I may not make it. Okay, you guys go. No, we'll be right back. No, no, no.
thank you to the public for understanding. Um, <laughs> I, w I never would have left except that Ian said she had to, so then I decided <laughs> I, would, I would follow. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was here, um, I've been here since two thirty. So. I I I know. I did very well, but anyway, yeah. Mr. Mr. Levis has more to discuss. So here we go, Dr. Ann Dixon. Go. Yeah, the the last part of my report is um as as you know this is Dr. Dixon's uh, last meeting, and I'm going to make it short. Um, I know I tend to go on, and uh, I know that's feedback I received, and I probably haven't followed it already. I know I haven't, but uh, next meeting. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I just want to say that um, Dr. Dixon uh, has been uh, just, I, I, I've never worked in anybody that's a harder worker and, uh, than, than Dr. Dixon, and it doesn't mean that other people don't work hard. Um, I... Uh, you know, I think I, I saw Andy a little uh, disappointment when you heard her getting appointed to the uh, policy subcommittee. Like, okay, how's this going to work? But um, in all seriousness, you've been, uh, you know, for me, I know you've been a great support and um, just always there to, to not only focus on what's important for our students and in, in our community, but you constantly have always supported me and said, you know, what are you doing for yourself and, and taking care of yourself? And, and I truly appreciate that. I, um, while, and like I said, this whole thing for you moving on has been a double-edged sword because I, I'm looking forward to the support um, on the council and, and we definitely need that. And somebody, uh, you know, I was questioning the other day, I wonder how many individuals in Coventry have served on the town council and on the school committee. I don't know how we do that research, but I don't know. If that's been yeah. okay, maybe yeah. a couple. Frank Hyde. Frank Hyde. All right, but I think that's something that brings a whole different body of knowledge. So, having said that, um, we just wanted to have a little little celebration tonight. We have a, we have a cake and water. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no coffee because it's late. But uh, I'll come around. Give you your, uh, your, your name plate. Name plate. <laughs> <laughs> give you some, uh, this some, is a wonderful some roses. Oh, and then I'm just going to read this certificate of appreciation presented to Ann Dixon, ED, in recognition of outstanding dedication, commitment to Coventry Public Schools and Community, and signed by the, the committee and myself. Oh, how wonderful. And then I'll, I'll come around and give you a hug on the other side. <laughs> I've always been very passionate about education and my primary motivation in um, running for town council was so that I could be an advocate for education on the, on the town council. So I greatly appreciate this. I especially appreciate the roses, my husband's favorite flower to give me a carnation. So, <laughs> we upgraded them. <laughs> so, so this is very, very special. So I will always remember the school committee as the ones who gave me roses. So ah. this, is, this, is, this is very wonderful. And thank you. This is a, a wonderful nameplate. And uh, I greatly appreciate uh, the certificate with everyone's signature. That is very, very simple. Very, very um, appreciative and very special. So um, I hope that I do a wonderful job. and and supporting you all um, when I'm on the council starting Monday. And I, I intend to let them know at every meeting that I'm here to help, you know, support education, but also, you know, there are other things like sewers that I'm learning about now and turbines and solar farms. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. I'll be a little out of my comfort zone for a while. I hope not too long. Education is something that I feel very familiar with and um, I'm very appreciative. Um, Mr. Brad is here and Joe are here, and um, I greatly appreciate the time you spent with me to take me on tours. Um, I've also spent time with Don, meeting with him in his office and with Sarah, and everyone has always been so, uh, so friendly and appreciative of all the questions I've asked and always had ready answers, and I greatly appreciate that, and I hope that we continue to have a, a wonderful relationship together. Um, thank you to all my school committee members. 
um, and staff who have always been just 100% um, supportive of whatever we've tried to do. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we have to thank my husband, Andy. Yes, thank you, Andy. Thank you, Andy. He's always, he's always ready for my next challenge. He doesn't know what it will be. I just, I just wanted to follow up that we didn't even ask you to make a comment. She just started. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but Mr. Levis was going to give you a hug, so when we have the cake, we'll have to, I'll we'll have to. Go. Um, my only comments, and I'll, I'll let the committee all talk. Um, um, I will miss you on school committee, and um, I think every er, people have already stated um, your dedication. Um, the fact that you are willing to take on a new challenge is just amazing to me. Um, I don't know where you get that spunk or energy or whatever. Um, I take a vitamin every day. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I will say that I've always valued your opinion. You always are extremely uh, thoughtful in your discussions in executive session, in the open sessions that we've had, um, and I will miss um, your comments, your questions, your ability to be so articulate um, when you're expressing your thoughts, your questions, and I just want to thank you so much for your service. You will be greatly missed. Um, I wish you the best of luck on the town council. I don't think I could make that transition personally myself. As much as I would love to be able to advocate for schools, I'm not sure I could do that job. Um, so I am just wishing you the best, best of luck. And I know you've got a long, um, you know, a transition just to catch up with the work that's so different from our work. Um, it will be still wonderful to see you at town council meetings, and I'll try not to sit in the back and close my eyes and fall asleep. Um, <laughs> I don't typically do that. I try to stay awake. But anyway, um, I'm looking forward to seeing I, I, I will definitely be here to do reports and everything else. And um, so, yes, yes. Speaking of which, we will not go to the football game on Thanksgiving because it has, in fact, been rescheduled to Saturday. So. Thank goodness. Um, but yes, thank you so much, Ann, for um, all the service and, and, and your attention to detail and just your wonderful service in general. Thank you so much. I appreciate that yeah. very much, Jeff. It's been a pleasure. Uh, Dave? Ann, I knew the night, David? I oh. knew the night <laughs> that you decided to run for council. Yeah. It was at the last financial town meeting. And they would not let you speak. And that's when I knew they're in trouble. <laughs> I, they're not in trouble, but, and you bring so much to the table, and you're such a hard worker. I can't believe you and Andy, that you and Andy, you, you, you go through a district that's huge, and you hit every house. And you try to talk to every person. Not everyone, right? Yeah, mostly, mostly. And you you have a passion for this, and you are absolutely fantastic. And this school committee is going to miss you. Oh, David, thank you so much. I am. <laughs> well, when, when we were out campaigning, I Andy would drive me up to a house, and I said, oh, Andy, this is where the chickens are. <laughs> 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 and there were no chickens there. So I, I went up to the woman and I said, I met you a couple of years ago when you, you had chickens. chickens. And she said, well, they're at my mother's house down the street. So oh. sure enough, when we got down the street, there were the chickens. <laughs> we also remembered where all the angry dogs were, too. So oh, boy. <laughs> yes, we've had a number of yes. adventures together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you and a personification of persistence. Well, speak to my husband about that. You, you will get... <laughs> I don't need the correction. Um, <laughs> you will get at the issues, and the town is going to be better with you on the council. Um, I hope so, but let's see, let's see how things go. Yeah. The jury is out. Oh. The jury didn't even convene yet. <laughs> we'll see. I don't Donna? Think, I don't think you and Andy would have worked so hard for that, for no reason. 
Is it my Donna, turn Donna, it's now? your turn, it's your yeah. Turn. I'm sorry, Donna. And I, I've just got to say, I so enjoyed sitting next to you. Well, thank you. But <laughs> these past four years, I really have. I remember speaking to you when I first ran, mm -hmm. the first time I ran, and you said, I found them. It was three years before I really knew what I was doing. And and I took that to heart. It's like, I, absolutely that. You know, we worked on a, a subcommittee together, and I'll tell you, I just, I really am going to miss. You You are so articulate, and I'll mirror what Kathy said. You, you're very articulate with everything you say. Your, your <coughs> questions are, you know, you ask just the right question. You say the right thing. It's just, it's, we learned a lot from you. And I'll cherish this time that we had together. Thank you. I love you too, Donna. <laughs> oh, yeah. you, don't have, you don't have to speak, Jay. <laughs> You've known him for us. <laughs> I've known Ann longer than most sitting up here, probably. Yeah, yeah um, probably. I still remember the conversations when Ann was first running for school committee. We, you know, have an interaction in the kitchenette at work and, oh. and talk about the goings yeah. on in Coventry and school committee and, mm -hmm. and she was very dedicated to that. Mm -hmm. um, but and you will you will sorely be missed on school committee. I I tell many people often that, you know, when I as I get on in years if I have half your energy and drive at at my stage in life that, that you're at now, um, it'll be a success. It, it's you're you're meticulous, you're thoughtful. Um, I think you always have good intentions in, in everything you do, and really, really wish for the for the best in everyone around you. Um, we'll be sorely missed here, but again, you'll be across the street, so I'll be close. You won't, you won't be too far. We'll see, we'll see you often. I'll be sitting in one of these chairs. Yeah, That's absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're not really, you're really not going any f further I'm than here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I think we will have a, a bigger audience. You will. Often. There are way Often. more people usually yeah. typically at. Yeah. But I do enjoy the quiet here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank the bigger, you. The bigger challenges are Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Anything from, from the citizens gathered before we move on? We can wait for cake after anyway. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, Chair Pearson's report. The Chair Pearson's report. Yeah. I have nothing to report except to say that, thank goodness, the game was changed from Thursday because we all would have frozen to death. Yeah. And the poor kids out there, I, it just wasn't worth it. Why, you know? So good decision, Mr. Levis. Um, yeah, well, whatever. We'll give you credit. Um, we'll give you credit for it. Uh, moving on to um, citizens' comments. Any citizens' comments? <laughs> Seeing none, we can schedule our next meeting. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I make a motion that the next, meet, next meeting of the school committee be scheduled for Thursday, December 13th at 6 p.m. at Coventry Town Hall. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries 5 to 0. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to mention before we close, and that is I do think, I haven't seen the agenda yet for the town council, but I do think that swearing in for all of us, the town council and the school committee will be on Monday. Um, I think the maybe it got posted, maybe it'll get posted tomorrow morning, maybe or posted this I afternoon. I called the town hall this morning, uh, this afternoon, to talk to uh, the town clerk, and she seemed to think it was going to be on the agenda. So, do you know something different? <laughs> You know more than I do. Well, I called to find out because it was not posted on the Secretary of State. Yeah. So, um, and we have not received invitations yet. So, but I well, assume that, that was gonna, I was trying to refrain from. Uh, we have not received. Receive I assume we will not have to worry about reading it on the agenda. You invited? What? Okay. Wow. Well, well, well. Oh. oh. Mm. Anyway, so um, were you invited? Were you invited? Oh, so they knew, kind of knew that it was happening. Yeah. Well, we'll see if, if it happens for us. Um, <laughs> from what I from what I heard, it was on our agenda, their agenda. Anyway, so moving on to adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? I have 9:31.
Madam Chair, I make a motion that the meeting be adjourned at 9.31 p.m. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry, motion carries 5 to 0. Please stay for some cake and some water. And take a picture of the cake before someone cuts into it. And Ian, you have the honors of cutting into the cake. Okay, and I would like my husband to take a picture of all of you with yes, me. We would like, uh, of course. We would love that. Of course.